Welcome to Beside the Burn, Thursday the 25th of January and it being Thursday we are turning to the Westminster Shorter Catechism and already we are at question 11. And question 11 of the Westminster Shorter Catechism asks us, what are God's works of providence? And the answer that we give, God's works of providence are his most holy, wise and powerful, preserving and governing all his creatures and all their actions. You may remember back to question 8 and we saw how God's decrees are executed in his works of creation and providence. And the last two questions, questions 9 and 10, were all about the first of those, creation. So now we're thinking about the second one, providence. And providence, to put it simply, is really divine guidance or divine care. So we're asking here, what are God's works of providence? What are his works of guidance and care? And the answer to this question reminds us that God is in control of all things. And if God is in control, that means that nothing else is in control. Not fate, not luck, not chance, not karma, or any of these other theories that the world would throw at us. It is God who is in control of all things. Calvin would say, John Calvin, the great reformer, would say to us that luck should not be part of our vocabulary. We can't say, oh, that was lucky or I was lucky because God's in control. And so whenever something happens to us, it is providential because it is because of God's guidance and care that something happens. So therefore, we talk about providence and being providential. And this isn't um, impersonal. This isn't blind determinism. God isn't distant, to, uh, just letting things play out in this world. He is actually here with us, guiding and caring for us along the way. It's not as if God has just set the world in motion and then he takes a step back and he watches to see what happens. You know the way you used to get clockwork cars or clockwork trains and you would wind them up and set them down and as you step back, the vehicle would make its way forward and it would do that until the uh, winding mechanism had run out. That's not what God has done with the earth. He hasn't wound it up and then just set it in motion and he's waiting until the winding mechanism stops and then he'll come back in again. No, God is here each and every day and he is guiding and caring for us through his providence. And God's works of providence are I suppose, a demonstration of his character. Because here in the answer to this question, we're told that his works are holy, wise, and powerful. And we know that these are words that are used to describe God. So God is acting in the same way as his character is. God is controlling everything. Now, what does that involve? Well, it means, first of all, that he is preserving everything. He keeps everything working. He keeps everything functioning. So, therefore, the sun is still shining today because God has decided that it will shine today. If God were to decide no more sun, then we would be in darkness. The rain falls on the earth because God has determined it. He has set that rain to fall. And in scripture, we not only see these huge areas where God is in control of all things, but we also see it on an individual level as well. So, for example, Elijah. Whenever he is hungry, God sends the ravens to feed him. That is God's providence, his providential care and his providential guidance of Elijah. And that's why 
This question and answer is so important because in it we remember that God is in control. But as the answer tells us here, it's not just his preserving, but it is also his governing all things. God um, governs everything that happens. And again, we see that in our own lives, that God decides the things that take place and those things uh, help us and guide us. We see it in scripture as well, the way that God has guided all the events that have taken place. If you want a good example, go to the book of Esther. And God is controlling all the details there. And uh, Haman is constructing a set of gallows because he wants to get rid of Mordecai. And the king asks Haman how he should honour someone that he's pleased with. And Haman thinks that the king is talking about him. And so he tells him about parading him through the city. And it turns out that the king wants to honour Mordecai and Haman is hung on his own gallows. God has governed all those events to take place and he has decided it. And we see in the answer as well that his preserving and governing, which are guided by his character that's holy, wise and powerful, his preserving and governing is for all his creatures and all their actions. Every single creature, even the ones that we can't see, even the ones that we don't even know exist, God is preserving and governing those creatures. And he is doing that with all their actions. A creature is not left to do what it wants. God determines what happens. But if that is also the case with our lives, then we've got a slight problem because does that mean that we are robots, that we don't actually have a say in anything? We don't have any free will because God has already determined what is going to take place. And here we have, a, if you don't mind me using a, a theological term, we have the doctrine of concurrence. And the idea here is that we have two things happening concurrently which may at first seem to contradict each other. But if you imagine two streams and uh, two, two streams of water that are coming down a mountainside and then they come together. And as they come together, Each of the streams has its own identity, but in coming together, they form now a new stream. And it's holding these two things um, together at the same time. God has his purpose and we make decisions ourselves. The two streams come together and they, they merge together, but there are still those two separate truths that have come together. So, for example, a good example in God's word is Joseph in the Old Testament. And he is sold into slavery. And then many years later, after his father has died, he speaks to his brothers and he reveals himself to them. And they're worried that he's going to kill them. But Joseph says, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Now, the brothers still had sinned in that case. They had sinned and they had to deal with the consequences of their sin of selling their brother into slavery. But God meant it for good. And the two streams concurrently work together. It's a doctrine of concurrence. We think about it at the cross. The Jews decided to kill the Messiah. But in doing that, they fulfilled what God had determined beforehand. Jesus had to be crucified, but the Jews at that time are responsible for the death of the Son of God. The two things come together. So here we have this wonderful truth. What are God's works of providence? God's works of providence are his most holy, wise and powerful, preserving and governing all his creatures and all their actions. Let's pray together.
Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a providential God who works according to your character in our lives. You're holy and wise and powerful. And we thank you, Lord, that you're the one who preserves us and governs over us, and not only us, but all your creatures and all their actions. And so, Lord, this day we trust in you because you know what is best for us. And we honour you and we glorify you with our lives. Amen.